Question five. So what is the probability of the sp spinner landing on a multiple of three? So how many of these are a multiple of three? Well, three, six, and nine are. So there are three of them. How many sides do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's three out of six. Write that as a, as a fraction and simplify it, dividing top and bottom by three. That's a half. So the probability of it landing on a multiple of three is a half. What is the probability of the spinner landing on a prime number? Now, remember, a prime number is the number that can only be divided by uh, one and itself, okay, to give you a, a, a whole number. Now, one, therefore, is not a prime because it's not one and itself because one is itself. So, huge point. One is not a prime number. Two is, three is, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, and so on. So how many prime numbers have we got here? We've only got two, which are three and seven. So it's two out of six, which simplifies by dividing top and bottom by two to a third. What is the probability of the spinner landing on a cube number? Well, a cube number is one you get having cubed another whole number. So one cubed is one, two cubed is eight, three cubed would be 27, so far too big. 1, 8, 27 would all be cube numbers. So 1 and 8 are the two we want. 1 and 8. So that's 2 out of 6 again, which is a third again. Now, part D is quite tricky. If spun twice, what is the probability that the sum of both spins adds up to 10? Well, there are four ways of spinning it twice and it totaling 10. You could get a 1, then a 9, or a 9, then a 1, a 3, then a 7, or a 7, then a 3. So there are four ways of getting what we want. But how many combinations are there in total if we spin this six-sided spinner twice? Well, let's just say, for example, let's just pick any old one at random. It doesn't matter what. Let's imagine the chances of a one and then a nine. A one and then a nine. The chances of spinning a one is a sixth, and then a nine is another sixth. Top times top, bottom times bottom is the 36th. So the chances of spinning any combination is one, 1 out of 36. There are four combinations that we're interested in. So we want four lots of 1 over 36, which is 4 over 36. Divide top and bottom by 4, that's a ninth. Now, what is the order of rotational symmetry of a regular hexagon? The way I think best to... Um, to think about what rotational symmetry is. Imagine you've got one of those um, toys the little kids have that have got the circles or the squares or the triangles cut out of them and then little ones just try and put the appropriate little blocks through that triangle or through a circle or through a square or what have you. Now what you've got to imagine is as you turn this round um, a full 360 degrees all the way around how many different ways could it fit through that hole? Now there would be, if you just imagine you've got a, a hexagonal hole, there would be six ways of doing it. You could have the one at the top, or the three at the top, or the nine at the top, and so on. So the um, the rotational order of rotational symmetry is six because there would be six different ways of slotting a hexagon through the hole.